In our last video, we talked about simple extensions of a field as a way to take a small base field and tack onto it some new numbers that weren't in the field before and make that bigger field, that extended field, as small as possible while still containing the base field and the additional numbers that we wanted. We looked at that construction from two different perspectives. First of all, we took a base field like the rationals and an irreducible polynomial over the rationals, such as t cubed minus 2, which satisfies Eisenstein's criterion with prime 2. So this is irreducible. It has no roots, therefore, which are rational numbers. But through our quotient construction in the last video, we saw how we could extend the rationals by constructing the polynomial ring and taking the quotient by this. In order to construct a bigger field, an extended field, that now contains a root of this polynomial, for example, the real cube root of 2. So that was our first construction. How do we construct a field that has roots of a polynomial that didn't have roots before? We also then looked at the second question. If I have a small field like, for example, again, the field of rationals, and I have an algebraic number, in other words, a number that we believe satisfies a polynomial equation with coefficients in our small field, how do I construct an extended field that contains our original base field as well as this algebraic number and as little else as possible. We would call that field, the rationals or the base field or whatever, adjoined with this element. And of course, for the cube root of 2, it was fairly clear what the connection was between the second method and the first method. If we're looking to adjoin the cube root of 2 to the rationals, we should really think about the quotient of the polynomial ring of the rationals by the principal ideal generated by t cubed minus 2. In other words, for a number that's relatively simple like this one, it's easy to see what polynomial corresponds to this algebraic number. But in other situations, the answer might not be so clear. If I have a number that I believe to be algebraic, like the square root of 3 minus the square root of 2, how do I then find a polynomial of which that number is a root? In other words, do I even know that square root of 3 minus square root of 2 is algebraic? How do I prove that? I can prove it if I find a polynomial over the rationals of which square root of 3 minus square root of 2 is a root. But it's not really clear in a situation a little more complicated like this one how to do that. In this video, we'll talk about the minimal polynomial of an algebraic number over a field. And specifically, we're going to think of the rationals a lot. And that's a process by which we can determine a polynomial of which an algebraic number is a root. And that polynomial, that we call the minimal polynomial, is going to be as basic as possible. It's going to be irreducible, so we can't break it down any further. And it's going to be monic, in the sense that the leading coefficient of this polynomial is going to be 1. But the search for the minimal polynomial of a given algebraic number is kind of interesting. So we're going to look first at how do we construct a polynomial that matches a given algebraic number and is irreducible and monic. And second, we're going to think about the question of why that polynomial, that irreducible monic polynomial, always exists for an algebraic number and furthermore is uniquely defined for an algebraic number. So if you and I both get square root of 3 minus square root of 2 and we're asked to come up with an irreducible monic polynomial of which this is a root over the rationals, you and I are going to come up with the same answer. So our goal is twofold. First of all, if I have a small field f and an algebraic number alpha over f, how do I find a polynomial that sends alpha back into f? In other words, a polynomial over f of which alpha is a root. Ideally, that same polynomial would also define the field E over f. In other words, E would exactly be the extension of f by the irreducible polynomial p. So in our last video, we talked about the two different kinds of constructions. First of all, taking a small field f and a polynomial which has no roots in f. So for example, a polynomial that's irreducible over f. And extending f to a bigger field e using a quotient construction. And when we use that quotient construction, by definition, that extended field will have at least one root of p in it. So it has a root that we didn't have before in the smaller field. And the way to do it, again, is just to take the quotient of the polynomial ring over f by the principal ideal generated by p. Because the result of that is that we get a new field that contains an element t, which is now going to stand in for our root, and in which p, the polynomial, and all of its multiples are by definition set equal to 0. Therefore, that t is actually a root of this polynomial. We also looked at the opposite construction, where we start with a small field f and a number alpha, which is algebraic over f, 
and ask how do we build a larger field that contains alpha and is as small as possible. And we did it just by saying, well, if we have to contain the field f and we have to contain alpha, then we have to contain all linear combinations over f of those two things. So our elements have to at least take the form c0 plus c1 alpha, where c0 and c1 are elements of the small field f. But if we contain alpha, we also have to contain the powers of alpha, alpha squared, alpha cubed, and so on. And so we'll just sort of keep taking powers until we can figure out how to make some of those powers combine together to get us back into f. Once we reach that point, then we have enough independent elements over f, and E is just going to be a finite dimensional vector space over the field f that consists of linear combinations of one and some powers of alpha. And we call that field the simple extension f adjoin alpha. So we know how to translate from the first viewpoint to the second viewpoint. So if I have uh, an extension which is designed to give me new roots of a polynomial that didn't have roots in my base field before, then I know exactly what new element I'm going to get inside of my field by that construction, using the quotient construction. That new element that I get in my field is exactly that new root of a polynomial that I didn't have before. So the question of this set of videos is, what is the opposite translation? In other words, if I know what new algebraic number that I want to create, how do I discover a polynomial, p, of which that alpha is a root, and ideally, which is the same p that defines e as an extension of f using the quotient construction? So the big question, first and foremost, is of which polynomial is alpha a root? After all, we would like for this simple extension to be the same as the quotient construction. And if that simple extension is indeed a field, in other words, if the quotient of f adjoint t by the principal ideal generated by the polynomial p, if that's a field, then that ideal that we're taking the quotient by has to be a maximal ideal. And the best way to guarantee that is to guarantee that p is an irreducible polynomial. So now we know what we're searching for. Given a new algebraic number alpha over f, we want to discover a polynomial p of which alpha is a root and which is irreducible. So we can actually construct the extended field E, which is f adjoin alpha, the simple extension, by taking the quotient of the polynomial ring over f by the principal ideal generated by p. In the next video, we'll look at a series of examples of algebraic numbers over the rationals and how to discover a polynomial that fits this description. And in the video after that, We'll talk about the proof of why a minimal polynomial, which is what we call this p, always exists for an algebraic number over f, and furthermore, that the minimal polynomial for a given algebraic element is unique.